immediately rule out some of the theories. For example, the idea that meteorite showers could have caused that pattern. Thousands and thousands of these stone jars. Ultimately, all... that's what it's all about. That's where the body of the king is going to rest in eternity. And so they've gone to all this trouble to create this incredible monument around the body of that person. ...is an eternal flame that constantly burns. Have you ever noticed that the Earth does some pretty strange things? Some of these happen without any reason at all. But the Earth is a complicated place, and much research has taken place over the years. Scientists have learned a lot about what is happening under our feet and above our heads. The world is truly an amazing place. It is home to us, humans, and most recently has been host to our technology, especially what we use for the exploration of space. The Earth has not only given us life, but also inspiration and awe. Now, if you're curious about some of the mysteries of our planet, check out this list of 20 places the Earth acts in mysterious ways. Number 20 meeting point of Atlantic and Pacific. Do you wonder about the mysterious location that should have never existed? Well, here it is. It is the meeting point between two oceans where two bodies of water meet and don't mix. There is a clear line between the two bodies of water, which you can see because they are different colors. Most of us know that the Pacific Ocean is between the east coast of the Americas and the west coast of Oceania and Asia. Between Europe and Africa is the east, and the Americas in the west is the Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is known to be the world's biggest and deepest ocean. It is about 165 million square kilometers and has a depth of around 17,000 meters. It has an average depth of 4,280 meters. The Atlantic Ocean is the second largest ocean, which covers around 107 million square kilometers and has a depth of 3,646 meters. Even though we call the oceans on our planet by different names, there is no real border between them. Currents flow between them and mix their waters all the time. At Cape Horn, the southernmost point of South America, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans meet. A strong current moves water from west to east through this area, bringing water from the Pacific into the Atlantic. Going around Cape Horn by ship is a rough, dangerous trip that has cost many people their lives. Before the Panama Canal was built, it was the only way to get from the Pacific to the Atlantic by sea. Number 19. The Bermuda Triangle The Bermuda Triangle represents one of the most mysterious places in the world. This area, said to be at least 500,000 square miles, or 1.295 million square kilometers, is in the Atlantic Ocean between Miami, Florida, and the islands of Bermuda and Puerto Rico. People say more than 20 planes and 50 ships have mysteriously disappeared or crashed without explanation. Even though ships pass through this area daily without a problem, and there aren't more disappearances happening in the Bermuda Triangle than in any other large, well-traveled ocean part, the mysterious accidents still catch people's attention. The enigmatic Bermuda Triangle, known as the Devil's Triangle, is an enduring tale surrounding a loosely defined region in the western North Atlantic Ocean. The vastness of the search region in the Bermuda Triangle could make it difficult to find a missing plane, and the disappearance would certainly be unusual, but it wouldn't be paranormal or impossible to explain. According to legend, numerous planes and ships have vanished under mysterious circumstances within this perplexing expanse. Midway through the 20th century, people started to think that the area was especially prone to disappearances, but most reliable sources say that there is no mystery. Some writers gave the triangle different edges and points. The total area was anywhere from 1,003,000 to 3,900,000 kilometers squared. Number 18. Blood Falls, Antarctica Antarctica is the driest and oldest place on Earth. It's also home to Blood Falls, a red waterfall that drops five stories along an icy white glacier. Scientists finally figured out that the color is caused by salty, iron-rich water from inside the glacier rusting when it comes into contact with oxygen. Blood Falls is where a plume of iron oxide tainted salt water flows from the tongue of Taylor Glacier onto the frozen surface of West Lake Bonnie in the Taylor Valley of the McMurdo Dry Valleys in Victoria Land, East Antarctica. Small cracks in the ice cascade sometimes let out iron rich, very salty water. 
Salt water comes from a subglacial pool covered by about 400 meters of ice and several kilometers away from its tiny outlet at Blood Falls. The size of this pool is unknown. Thomas Griffith Taylor, an Australian geologist, was the first to explore the valley that now bears his name. He found the red deposit there in 1911. The first people to go to Antarctica thought the red color came from red algae, but iron oxides caused it. The Taylor Glacier is different from most Antarctic glaciers because it is not frozen to the bedrock. This is likely because salts have been concentrated by the crystallization of ancient seawater trapped below it. And remember folks, don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you are yet to do that. Go on, kindly do that now, as long as you're not feeling as salty as this waterfall. Number 17. Great Blue Hole, Belize Even though the name of the Great Blue Hole is fairly straightforward, its size and beauty are still overwhelming. Off the coast of Belize, there is a huge isolated marine sea hole that is more than 121.92 meters deep and 304.8 meters across. Scuba divers throng to this location to explore marine life, coral reefs, and hypnotically pure seas. Jacques Cousteau made the location well known by listing it among the world's top five scuba diving locations. He visited the hole in 1971 with his ship, the Calypso, to measure its depths. This expedition's investigations determined that the hole was produced by typical cast limestone formations, which occurred in at least four stages before sea levels rose and left ledges at depths of 21.0312 meters. 49.0728 meters and 91.1352 meters. The recovery of stalactites from submerged caves proved that they had previously formed above sea level. A few of these stalactites were also consistently oriented 5 degrees off vertical, suggesting that the underlying plateau had previously undergone some tectonic movement and tilting before spending considerable time in the present plain. Instead of only rising sea levels, the tilt suggests a shift in the land. The Great Blue Hole's first recorded depth, which is still the most frequently mentioned depth to this day, was approximately 124.968 meters. Number 16. Lake Abraham, Alberta, Canada Lake Abraham in Alberta, Canada is a magnificent turquoise lake during the warmer months. However, during the winter, suspended white spheres that resemble snowballs are present in the frozen water. These ice bubbles may appear to be the work of Christmas magic. Still, they are hazardous pockets of combustible methane gas produced by the decay of organic material at the lake's bottom. Certainly not very Christmassy now, is it? With its remarkable milky blue waters, the product of rock flour and fine silt transported down from adjacent glaciers, Lake Abraham resembles other glacier lakes in the Rocky Mountains. It also has surrounding snow-capped peaks. Lake Abraham, however, is artificial. The Bighorn Dam on the North Saskatchewan River was built in 1972, resulting in the lake, Alberta's largest reservoir. It has the name of Silas Abraham, a pioneer explorer and resident of the North Saskatchewan River Valley in the late 1800s. The truth is that Lake Abraham has a nasty case of gas, which isn't something that most people would be proud of. Methane specifically. When dead organic matter enters bodies of water and sinks to the bottom, methane bubbles are created. Methane gas is produced when bacteria consume organic material like leaves and dead animals. This is especially noticeable in a man-made lake like Lake Abraham because the lake bed was already covered in vegetation. Number 15. Lake Hillier, Australia Australia's Lake Hillier may boast the most distinctive and beautiful waters in the world with its bubblegum pink waters. Its proximity to the Pacific Ocean helps its natural hues stand out dramatically. Although tourists aren't safe in the water, it has a lot of fish living in it and is even safe for swimming. Although the cause of Lake Hillier's color is unknown, it's most likely due to chemical reactions, bacteria, or algae growth. Lake Hillier has a length of around 600 meters and a width of about 250 meters. The only living things in Lake Hillier are microorganisms like the red algae, Dunaliela salina, which turns the lake's salt concentration into a red dye that gives it its color, and the red halophilic bacteria, Bacterio ruberin, which is found in the salt crusts. 
In the 19th century, salt was mined from the lake. The toxicity of the salt harvested for consumption is just one of several factors contributing to the failure of the salt mining enterprise. The lake's northern side is separated from Middle Island's northern coast by a thin strip of dunes covered in vegetation. The lake is encircled by a rim of sand and dense woods of paperbark and eucalyptus trees. The lake's vivid pink color is its most distinguishing characteristic. The vivid color remains constant when the water is taken in a container. The organism Denaliella salina is thought to cause the pink color. Number 14. Skellig Michael, Ireland Skellig Michael is a twin pinnacled crag located 11.6 kilometers west of the Ivorake Peninsula in County Kerry, Ireland. Skellig comes from the Irish word ceiling, which means a stone fragment. The island got its name after the archangel Michael. Little Skellig, or Skellig Biag, is its smaller, remote twin island where landing is prohibited. The McGillicutty's Reek mountain range and the two islands rose during mountain formation between 374 and 360 million years ago. Later, as the water level rose, they became cut off from the mainland. Skellig Michael comprises about 22 hectares, or 54 acres, of granite, with the spit, in other words, the peak, rising 218 meters above sea level. The island's high, hostile environment is characterized by its own twin peaks and intervening valley, known as Christ's Saddle. Archaeologists are particularly interested in the island, since the monastic settlement is in extraordinarily good shape. The rock is home to the ruins of a tower house, a megalithic stone row, and a slab known as the Wailing Woman, with a cross carved into it. The Flagstaff location is located 37 meters above sea level. Christ Saddle is at 129 meters, and the monastery is at an elevation of 170 to 180 meters. The mysterious island of Skellig Michael is located 12,874.8 meters off the coast and rises more than 213.36 meters above sea level. Number 13. Vardu Island, Maldives, Sea of Stars. There is a reported tradition about a sea that shines on a distant island in the Maldives, a small wonderful island nation with barely 500 inhabitants. After the sun sets, it is said that the waves that lap at the shores are illuminated from within, displaying brilliant hues of bright blue. In the darkness, the ocean mirrors the radiance of the sun, glistening with a brilliance that blurs the line between its watery depths and the starry expanse above. Those who have visited Vardhu Island can attest that the phenomenon is real and appears as vivid and bright as it is said to be. The waters around Vardhu Island, which is a part of the Maldives in the Indian Ocean, are referred to as the Sea of Stars. Millions of dinoflagellates, bioluminescent bacteria, release a bluish glow when disturbed, like aquatic fireflies. These floating lights can bypass the splendor of the most beautiful night sky or breathtaking sunset when the circumstances are ideal. How Vardhu Island shines is among the most often asked questions by the general public, and it makes sense to wonder how this shoreline acquires such an oddly luminescent appearance. Vardhu Island stands out with its extraordinary sparkle, courtesy of a captivating natural phenomenon called bioluminescence. Number 12. Plain of Jars, Laos Plain of Jars is a megalithic archaeological site. It compromises thousands of stone jars dispersed throughout the middle plain of the Xiangquang Plateau's upland valleys and lower foothills. One to several hundred jars are grouped in each cluster. The main mountain range of Indochina, the Annamese Cordillera, ends at the Xiangquang Plateau in the north. In 1930, French researcher Madeleine Colani concluded that the jars were related to burial customs. This theory has been supported by the discovery of human remains, burial items, and ceramics around the jars during the excavations conducted by Lao and Japanese archaeologists over the subsequent years. Researchers discovered that the jars were installed between 1240 and 660 BC using optically simulated luminescence. Using detrital zircon geochronology, it was discovered that the jars at Site 1 were brought to their current location from a putative quarry 8 kilometers distant. One of Southeast Asia's most significant prehistoric sites is the Plain of Jars. 
A plateau in Xiangquang is covered with over 2,000 enormous, enormous old stone jars. Some are several tons in weight and stand 10 feet tall. The jars are considered to be around 2,000 years old, but archaeologists are unsure of their use. The most popular hypothesis is that they were used as urns for funerals. Number 11. Moraki Baldis, Kokia Beach, New Zealand. Dreamy mountains, timeless fjords, old forests, and peculiar boulders can all be found in New Zealand. On the South Island's east coast lies the Moraki Boulders, one of New Zealand's strangest tourist destinations. The Moraki Boulders immediately follow any necessary South Island itinerary, so no special effort is required to visit them. Despite the country's high travel costs, most of New Zealand's natural features, including national parks, are free to visit. One best way to visit New Zealand on a budget is to visit free and interesting sites like the Moraki Boulders. The Punakaiki Pancake Rocks are another striking coastal rock formation attraction on the South Island. The Moraki Boulders, which are unexpectedly spherical, were produced about 65 million years ago and were deposited on Kokio Beach, close to Moraki. They are said to be gourds that washed up on the shores of New Zealand, a country with some of the most breathtaking beaches in the world, according to Maori legend. The Moraki boulders are concretions revealed on the coastal cliffs by shoreline erosion. Around 60 million years ago, they first appeared in the ancient seafloor sediments. They originated in the Moraki formation mudstone during the Paleocene epoch. The largest rocks, over two meters wide, can weigh several tons. Number 10. Devil's Bridge, Kromlau, Germany. The Rakotsbruck, a finely arched Devil's Bridge located in Kromlauer Park in Kromlau, Germany, was constructed to form a circle when reflected in the waterways below it. The slender bridge that spans the Rakout Sea's waters was ordered in 1860 by the town's knight and is roughly constructed from various local stones. The Rakoutsbruck is called a Devil's Bridge, along with many other similarly perilous stretches around Europe. According to the idiom that such bridges were so dangerous or miraculous that Satan must have created them. The bridge was built by mortal hands like all the others, but it seemed like its aesthetics were more important to its creators than its practicality. At both ends of the Ratzotbruck, slender rock spires are meticulously designed to mimic the naturally occurring basalt columns that grace Germany's landscapes. Additionally, the bridge's curvature is intended to resemble the lower half of a perfect circle, giving the appearance of a full stone circle when the waters are calm and the lighting conditions are favourable. The bridge is still visible today in the park, although it cannot be crossed due to preservation concerns. The most well-known Devil's Bridge location is in the German town of Kromlau. At the same time, several locations worldwide with the same name have acquired this moniker due to some form of paranormal association. Number 9. Fairy Circles, Namibia Namibia, an African nation, has a desert terrain covered in many circular patches because of their distinct shape and design that gives them the impression that tiny, fanciful animals made them. These eerie ovals of dirt are known as fairy circles and are surrounded by grass rings. They can be anywhere between 3.6576 and 34.7472 meters in length. Although scientists have many hypotheses, including those involving creepy crawlies like sand termites, recent research suggests that the pattern is caused by plants competing for limited water space. The most sensible geometric arrangement that a plant in need of water would make, according to Getzin, the circumference of those circles would be covered in many more individual kinds of grass if they were squares or low, complicated buildings. In comparison to growing in a circle, the proportional area is smaller. Because arranging these grasses in a circle makes the most sense, the amount of water available to each plant is maximized. The paper described this as an instance of eco-hydrological feedback, in which the arid circles serve as reservoirs that support the grasses along the outside but not in the middle. Getzin noticed that this self-organization is used in various hard drylands worldwide to protect against the harmful impacts of growing aridity. Number 8. The Great Pyramid of Giza, Egypt For numerous years, up to thousands, the Great Pyramid of Giza has captivated humankind. 
It is one of the most known tourist destinations on Earth, and is the only one of the seven wonders of the ancient world still standing. Visitors and academics alike are still perplexed about how the 455 foot tall pyramid was built without modern technology, despite widespread ideas that they were built utilizing a ramp system. Egyptian officials announced the discovery of a mysterious 9.144 meter long corridor walled up inside one of the Giza pyramids. The chamber is believed to be about 4,500 years old, according to Egyptian Minister of Tourism and Antiques, Ahmed Issa, who reported the finding at a news conference. The corridor, which is located above the pyramid of Khufu's main entrance, is almost 9.144 meters long and around 1.8288 meters wide. Archaeologists failed to notice the location for many years. It was only recently identified thanks to cutting-edge scanning technology. ISA credited the discovery of the Global Scan Pyramids Project, or SPP. The purpose behind the creation of the corridor is still unknown to experts. They anticipate that the corridor will lead to other discoveries, according to Christian Gross, a prominent member of the SPP and professor of non-destructive testing at the Technical University of Munich. Number 7. Eternal Flame Falls In New York's Chestnut Ridge Park, if you take the path to Shale Creek, you'll see a strange orange-red light glowing behind a waterfall that appears straight out of a fairy tale. Natural methane gas escaping via fissures in the rock fuels this eternal flame that is burning behind the sea. But the flame isn't quite eternal. Obviously, the water puts out the fire, so people frequently light it again with a lighter to maintain the magic. New York State's Chestnut Ridge County Park, south of Buffalo, has a lovely nature reserve with a small waterfall. The eternal flame, a fire that never goes out, is something remarkable that is concealed beneath this waterfall. Most people were perplexed by this fascinating event because there was no satisfactory scientific explanation. Although there are other eternal flames in the world, this one seemed to have a geological process that was a little mysterious. Gases released from underlying rocks typically keep perennial flames burning. This specific flame, trapped in a natural pocket 400 meters below the surface, is barely 30 inches tall and uses roughly 0.907185 kilograms of gas daily. This is one of the biggest amounts of methane ever discovered on such a surface, combined with ethane and propane. Number 6. Giant's Causeway, Northern Ireland the Giant's Causeway is located in Northern Ireland at the base of the basalt sea cliffs along the Antrim Plateau. About 40,000 enormous black basalt columns that protrude from the water make up this structure. Legends of giants crossing the sea to Scotland were born from this stunning sight. Geological investigations of these formations over the past 300 years has significantly advanced the Earth sciences and demonstrate that, that the Tertiary, or about 50 to 60 million years ago, when this stunning landscape was formed, was a period of intense volcanic activity. At the tip of the Antrim Plateau in Northern Ireland, on the seacoast, is a breathtaking region of international geological significance known as the Giant's Causeway and Causeway Coast. Its most distinctive and singular feature is the site's exposure to almost 40,000 massive, consistently shaped polygonal basalt columns arranged in flawless horizontal sections to form a pavement. This breathtaking site gives rise to stories of giants crossing the ocean to Scotland. The property is a classic locale for studying basaltic volcanism due to its accessible array of intriguing geological exposures and polygonal columnar formations created roughly 60 million years ago. Understanding the phases of activity in Earth's geological history has been greatly influenced by the characteristics of the Giant's Causeway and Causeway Coast location, particularly the strata exposed in the cliff faces. Number 5. Devil's Tower National Monument, Wyoming. Devil's Tower is a striking piece of geology that sticks out of the rolling prairie surrounding the Wyoming Black Hills region. It was the country's first national monument when it was made in 1906. It looks like a beautiful mountain, but it's made of columns of molten rock that cooled into interesting shapes. This place is important to many Native American tribes, and the science fiction movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind uses it because it has a mythical feel. 
Native American ceremonies are still held here, and it's also popular for rock climbing and hiking. Devil's Tower, also called Bear Lodge Butte, is a butte made of igneous rock in the Bear Lodge Ranger District of the Black Hills, closer to Hulet and Sundance in Crook County, northeastern Wyoming, above the Belfourshire River. It may be lacolithic, meaning it's made of sedimentary rock. It stands 264 meters tall from the top to the bottom, and is 386.1816 meters above Fourche River. The highest point is 1,558.1376 meters above sea level. On September the 24th, 1906, President Theodore Roosevelt set up Devil's Tower as the first national monument in the United States. The area inside the monument's boundary is 1,347 acres. Number 4. Island of the Dolls, Mexico City, Mexico Isla de las Muecas is an island in the canals of Xochimilco in Mexico City. The name means Island of the Dolls in Spanish. The story goes that the island's caretaker was haunted by guilt after a little girl drowned here more than 50 years ago and he couldn't save her. As a tribute, he hung dolls all over the island. Some say creepy dolls with missing limbs, heads and eye sockets haunt the island. Don Julian Santana Barrera used to own the Island of the Dolls. It is full of dolls hanging from trees and buildings with spider webs and bugs. The place got its name when dolls started showing up on the island by chance in the 1950s. Santana lived near the Barrio de la Asuncion. After selling his vegetables, he used to go there to drink pulque, but he was kicked out of the area when he started preaching the Bible because of superstitions. In 1987, a group of eco-tourists saved an island full of water lilies. After Santana died, Shinampa became a place people came to see. In 1943, Mexican director Emilio Fernandez made the movie Mara Candelaria there, which made the area more well known. Many international and local channels like the Huffington Post, Travel Channel and ABC News have done stories on the island. Number 3. Kawa Aijin Lake, Indonesia Two of the strangest things on Earth happened at the Kawa Aijin volcano on Java Island in Indonesia. The first is an active solfatara that sends out hot, flammable gases made of sulfur. They catch fire when they hit Earth's oxygen-rich atmosphere and burns with a bright blue flame. Some of the gas condenses in the air to make flows of molten sulfur that also burn with an electric blue flame. During the day, the flames are hard to see but at night, they light up the landscape. The second thing is a lake of turquoise-colored water in a caldera that is one kilometer wide. The color of the water comes from the fact that, is, that it is very acidic and has a lot of metals dissolved in it. It is the largest acidic lake in the world, with a pH level as low as 0.5. It is acidic because gas-filled hydrothermal waters from a hot magma chamber below flow into it. Because of a rare natural event that happens here, Kawa Aijin Lake and Volcano are both scary and beautiful. Around the lake, sulfuric gases burst through the rock and catch fire when they reach the air. When that happens, flames shoot up to 4.8768 meters into the air. The fires look blue, and what looks like electric blue lava flows down the mountain. Number 2. Stone Spheres, Palma Sur, Costa Rica The Stone Spheres of Costa Rica are a collection of more than 300 petrospheres on the Diquis Deltan and Isla del Cao. People often say that the spheres came from the now extinct Diqui culture, sometimes called the Diqui Spheres. They are the most famous stone sculptures in the Isthmo Colombian area. They may have been set up in lines near the entrances to the homes of chiefs, but no one knows for sure what they were for. The Palmas Sur archaeological excavations are a series of digs at a site south of the country called the Diki Delta. The digs have been centered on Finsa 6, or Farm 6. The artifacts were found during the Aguas Buenas period, which is between 300 to 800 CE, and the Sariku period, 500 to 1500 CE. The pre-Columbian chieftain settlements with stone spheres of the Diki were added to the list of the World Heritage Site by UNESCO in June 2014. In July 2014, a plan proposed in 2011 to make the spheres the country's national symbol was approved. 
Some archaeologists think the spheres could be solar systems, or just pictures of the sun and moon at different stages that can be seen with the naked eye, such as the sun setting, rising, or a half moon. The stone spheres of Costa Rica are still one of the biggest mysteries in archaeology. Number 1. Lake Natron, Tanzania Lake Natron is a salt or alkaline lake in Tanzania. It is in the North Ngorongoro district of the Arusha region. Located in the East African Rift's eastern branch, the Gregory Rift, the lake is in the Lake Natron Basin, an intentionally important wetland and a Ramsar site. The southern Iwaso Nigiro River, which stands in the middle of Kenya, and a mineral rich hot springs are the lake's main water sources. It's not very deep, less than 3 meters, and its width changes with the water level. The lake is up to 57 kilometers long and 22 kilometers wide at its widest point. The surrounding area gets about 800 millimeters or 31 inches of rain annually, most of it between December and May. A lot of the time, the lake is hotter than 104 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. Since there was much evaporation, natron, which is sodium carbonate decahydrate, and trona, which is sodium sesquicarbonate dihydrate, were left behind. The pH of the lake's alkalinity can be higher than 12. The bedrock around the area is made up of alkaline, sodium-rich trashite lavas formed during the Pleistocene. There is a lot of carbonate in the lava, but very little calcium and magnesium. Because of this, the lake has become a concentrated caustic alkaline brine. We hope you've enjoyed our tour of 20 mysterious places on Earth. Which of these mysterious locations would you love to visit in your lifetime? Tell us why in the comments section down below. And we encourage you to subscribe as we help you to keep exploring, stay curious, and of course never stop getting a sip out of the mysteries that make our world so fascinating. Also, be sure to let us know in the comments which location intrigued you the most. Until next time folks, happy exploring. This is Jake the Voice Pass signing off. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.